the University of St. Michael's College in downtown Toronto, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. Greetings and welcome to all of you. The televising of today's Mass is made possible by a contribution from two donors. The first is an anonymous donor from Toronto for her personal intentions, and the second is an anonymous donor from St. John's, Newfoundland, for the souls in purgatory, especially her father and mother, for the advance of the faith in this year of faith, and for the viewers of this telecast. We thank you for the, the gift of this telecast, and we begin as we should always begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. We know that each time we gather to celebrate the Eucharist, it's a great gift, a, gi a gift that God has given us through his Son, Jesus. We also know that many times we haven't expressed gratitude for the gifts that we received by the way that we've lived. And so at this time, we acknowledge our sin, our failing, and we ask forgiveness of God and of each other. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. And you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. And let us pray. And grant, O Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name, for you never deprive of your guidance those you set firm on the foundation of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Colossians. As you have received Christ Jesus the Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith, just as, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. See to it that no one takes you captive to philosophy and empty deceit according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the universe, and not according to Christ. For in him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily, and you have come to fullness in him, who is the head of every ruler and authority. In him also you were circumcised with a spiritual circumcision by putting off the body of the flesh in the circumcision of Christ. When you were buried with him in baptism, you were also raised with him through faith in the power of God who raised him from the dead. And when you were dead in trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive together with him. When he forgave us all our trespasses, erasing the record that stood against us with its legal demands, he set this aside. He set this aside, nailing it to the cross. He disarmed the rulers and authorities and made a public example of them, triumphing over them in it. The word of the Lord. The Bless your 
And the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. And Jesus went out to the mountain to pray, and he spent the night in prayer to God. And when day came, he called his disciples and chose 12 of them, whom he called apostles, Simon, whom he named Peter, and his brother Andrew, and James and John and Philip and Bartholomew, and Matthew and Thomas, and James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon, who was called the Zealot, and Judas, son of James, and Judas Iscariot, who became a traitor. And Jesus came down with them and stood on a level place with a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea, Jerusalem, and the coast of Tyre and Sidon. They had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. And those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. And all in the crowd were trying to touch him, for power came out from him and healed all of them. And this is the gospel of the Lord. I think we can safely say that the the principal focus in both readings is prayer. In Luke, we always find Jesus at prayer, especially in the most significant moments of his life and his journey. And in this instant, he prays the entire night for guidance as he discerns to choose from among many disciples the 12 that he will send out to assist in the mission of announcing the good news. In Paul's letter to the Colossians, the focus is on Paul's prayer for the church in Colossae. The letter was written while Paul was imprisoned, and he writes to the Christians at Colossae, who, without realizing, began to minimize the importance of Christ. They no longer feel secure in their belief in Christ, like some believers today who tend to believe in astrology or look up the the daily horoscope to see exactly what their destiny might be. They no longer look upon Christ as the center and the focal point of their belief. Paul, writing about Jesus, states clearly that as disciples they should focus on Jesus because in him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily and you have come to fullness in him. Paul insists that they focus on Jesus and rely on the Holy Spirit to be their guide and their strength. In the same vein, Pope Francis recently reflected on discipleship and said very clearly, the center is Jesus Christ, who calls us and sends us forth. He went on to say that we need a church capable of rediscovering the maternal womb of mercy, Without mercy, we have little chance nowadays of becoming part of a world of wounded persons in need of understanding, forgiveness, and love. Over the last couple of weeks, Pope Francis has been very active and taken a great deal of initiative to focus on peacemaking and conflict resolution, especially in light of the crisis in Syria. And he's encouraged all of us to pray for peace. Last Thursday, all of the ambassadors accredited to the Vatican were called in for a presentation by the Vatican, a brief by the Vatican on Syria. And this past Saturday, in the, on the vigil of the birth of Mary, Queen of Peace, he called for a day of fasting and peace, a fasting and prayer, rather, for peace in Syria, the Middle East, and throughout the world, and he extended the invitation to all Christians, to followers of all religions and all people of goodwill, to participate in the initiative. To the thousands of people gathered at St. Peter's Square 10 days ago, Pope Francis called us to pray for peace. He spoke very forcefully and very clearly. You may have heard the words before, but I repeat because it's worthwhile. And I quote, Dear brothers and sisters, I wish to add my voice to the cry which rises up with increasing anguish from every part of the world, from every people, from the heart of each person, from the one great family, which is humanity. And it's a cry for peace. It's a cry which declares with force, we want a peaceful world. We want to be men and women of peace, and we want 
in our society, torn apart by divisions and conflict, that peace break out. War never again. Never again war. Peace is a precious gift which must be promoted and protected. And acknowledging that war begets war, violence begets violence, he added, with similar vigor, I exhort the international community to make every effort to promote clear proposals for peace in that country without further delay. A peace based on dialogue and negotiation for the good of the entire Syrian people. And five days ago, he sent a letter to President Putin of Russia on the occasion of the opening of the G20 meeting in St. Petersburg. And in it, Pope Francis wrote the following. It's regrettable that from the very beginning of the conflict in Syria, one-sided interests have prevailed and in fact hindered the search for a solution that would have avoided the senseless massacre now unfolding. The leaders of the G20 cannot remain indifferent to the dramatic situation of the beloved Syrian people, which has lasted far too long and even risks bringing greater suffering to a region bitterly tested by strife and needful of peace. To the leaders present, to each and every one, I make a heartfelt appeal to find ways to overcome the conflicting positions and to lay aside the futile pursuit of a military solution. Rather, let there be a renewed commitment to seek with courage and determination a peaceful solution through dialogue and negotiation of the parties unanimously supported by the international community. Pope Francis has invited us to pray and to pray for peace. And so we pray. God of compassion, hear the cries of the people of Syria. Comfort those who suffer violence. Console those who mourn the dead. Give strength to Syria's neighboring countries to welcome the refugees. Convert the hearts of those who have taken up arms and protect those who are committed to peace. God of hope, inspire leaders to choose peace over violence and to seek reconciliation with their enemies. Inflame the universal church with compassion for the people of Syria and give us hope for a future built on justice for all. And this we ask through Christ our Lord. Please join me as we pray. We continue to pray this day for the many people who join us via television, for the many intentions that they've asked that we lift up in prayer. And so for all of them and for their intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our we pray that each one of us can enter into that spirit of prayer as Pope Francis has requested, that we may pray constantly to be peacemakers in our homes, to have peace in our hearts, and to pray for the wider world. And for all of them, we pray to the Lord. And all of this we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and the work of human hands. It will become the bread of life. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. And pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God the Father Almighty.
And receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise, and grant that cleansed by its action, we may make offering of a heart pleasing to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts, Amen. and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It's truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup <clears throat> of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. <clears throat> the mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Thomas, our bishop, and the entire church. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 
and faithful to the teaching of Jesus, and formed by his teaching and his command, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer to each other a sign of that peace. of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Would those of you at home join with me now in this prayer for serenity? O oh God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardships as the pathway to peace, taking, as he did, this sinful world as it is, not as I would have it, trusting that he will make all things right if I surrender to his will, that I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with him forever. Amen. And let us pray. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. And the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And let us go glorifying the Lord by the witness of our lives. I hope you have a good day, and to the degree possible, to remember the intention of the Holy Father, of Pope Francis, to lift up the people of Syria and all the people of the Middle East in our prayer. Have a good day. Thank you. Thanks to two donors, 
the first an anonymous donor from Toronto, Ontario, the second an anonymous donor from St. John's, Newfoundland. And it's their generous contributions that made the televising of today's Mass possible. If you'd like to sponsor a Mass or share in sponsoring a Mass, please call our office at one 888 383 for details. 